Hey, how's everyone doing? So this is the first in a series of two videos um, that's going to center around the properties of proportions. In this video, we'll define the term proportion. We'll also talk about some important terminology um, that you're going to need, need to know when we discuss proportions. We'll also look at different properties of proportions that hold true um, and that are really helpful when you want to solve an equation that is a proportion. So the second video will really just be more examples of actually applying the properties and using them to solve problems. So let's get started here. So the definition for a proportion is really simple, really straightforward. All it is is just two equal ratios. Now what you're seeing here are two different ways in which we can express proportions. Okay, these are probably the most commonly used um, ways of, to, of displaying a proportion. Um, and really all it's saying here is that this ratio A to B or A over B is equivalent to the ratio of C to D. And it's the same thing over here, again, just in a different format. And again, like I said, both of these are commonly used. We'll probably stick mostly with this one, I would say. But this one does show up on occasion. So be prepared to understand that. Now, a few terms that I want to talk about, and it really deals with the position of the numerical values. Um, in, the, in those proportions. So A and D occupy positions um, in that first proportion, and they are called the extremes. Okay, so A and D are called extremes. Now B and C, on the other hand, are called the means. And I think it's a little bit easier to see why those would be called the extremes and the means when we see the proportion written in this format. So again, here's A and D. Those again are the extremes. And then B and C are kind of stuck in the middle there. And those would be called the means. All right, now it's important that we understand that terminology. Because if we take a look here, we have the means and extremes property, which says that the product of the means in a proportion equals the product of the extremes. Okay, so the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And most of the time, you're going to hear this referred to as the cross product property. Or shortened up even more cross multiplication. All right, so again, if we look at the original statement up here, and I'm gonna rewrite it down here just so it's a little bit easier to see. So we have A is the B as C is the D. So what we can do here is we can multiply the extremes together. So A times D. And that's going to equal the product of the mean, so B times C. Now again, this is one that you may have been introduced to in earlier classes. Let me just highlight those again. So A times D equals B times C. But this one's extremely useful, um, especially when we start talking about similarity and also when we start talking about trigonometry in the not so distant future. Now, there are some additional properties that we can consider as well when we're solving proportions. Um, this first one is the cross product property that we just discussed. Okay, very, very useful. Um, here, what you'll notice is that the uh, means have been changed. Okay, so that's called the interchange means property. And I'd like to spend some time going through proofs of these, but again, I want to try to keep these videos as condensed as possible. Um, so again, maybe I can link some videos or some notes where you see proofs of each of these properties. So again, we can interchange the means and those um, proportions are going to remain equivalent. Here, um, this is just the reciprocal property. So we can flip both sides of the proportion. And again, it's going to remain a true statement. So again, this is the reciprocal property. And 
And then the last property, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what the name of that property is, but essentially what we're doing here is we're adding the value of the denominator to the numerator on both sides of the um, equation, and it's maintaining the balance, it's maintaining a true state. All right, so let's go ahead and just try to apply those properties real quick. Um, and then that will take us to the end of this video. And like I said, in the next video, you're gonna see where we would apply these properties in solving different equations. Okay, so in these examples right here, numbers one through four, we're just gonna be applying these properties from above. All right, so we're gonna be basically just manipulating this proportion that we're giving here. And again, trying to find an equivalent expression to whatever we get. So for instance, let's take a look at the first one. So here, we have 5y. So we're starting with this proportion. And really what's happened here is it looks like we've multiplied 5 and y together to get 5y on one side of the equation. So it looks like the cross product property is being applied. So that means we can multiply x times 2 and get 2x. So again, we can multiply the extremes together and also the means together in that product or the products of those are going to be equal to each other. So this is just an example of how the cross product property would work. Okay, I'm just going to erase this so we can see our original equation again. Now the next one here, again, what I'm focusing my attention on is the left hand side of this equation. And if you look here, it looks like what we've done is we've added the denominator, the value of the denominator to the numerator on the left-hand side of the equation. Now, again, this property labeled D up at the top of our notes says that we can also do that on the right-hand side. So an equivalent expression on the right-hand side would be 5 plus 2 all over 2. So those would be equivalent expressions. And if you wanted to, you could simplify the right-hand side. Uh, to make that 7 over 2 as well. But I'm going to leave it in this form just to kind of illustrate the property for you. The next one, um, we see 2 over 5. So I'm looking at the original equation. Um, and it looks like what's happened here is we've taken the reciprocal of the right-hand side. Um, so we can also do the same thing on the left-hand side. And that's going to maintain the balance in this equation. So 2 over 5 should be equal to y over x. We're just taking the reciprocal of the left-hand side. So we flipped 5 over 2 to get 2 over 5. To maintain the balance in this equation, we would have to flip the left-hand side as well. Okay, and then the last one, we have um, x over 5. So again, clearly it looks like what happens here is, or what has happened here is that 5 has been moved to the denominator of the fraction on the left-hand side. Um, so what we're doing here is we're interchanging the means. So to get an equivalent expression, we'd have to write this as y over 2. And again, that just illustrates how the interchange means property would work. So again, we can switch the position of the means, and that's going to maintain the balance in this equation. It's going to give us a true equation. All right, so like I said, this was more of just an introductory video to some of the properties of proportion and also some of the terminology um, that you'll need to know to be successful in this unit. I hope this video was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.